Hey everyone, I'm Dave with the Guitar Tricks channel, here with another great lesson and tip of the week. Make sure to like this video and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Let's check out that tip of the week. This week's tip is connecting chords with one common finger. So whenever you're making chord changes, especially with some of the open chords, a lot of acoustic guitar players and clean electric guitar players will be doing this. Look for a finger that might not need to move when you're switching from one chord to the next. Now I've given you a specific chord progression here that happens to have a connection between each of the four chords. So we're gonna use a G chord, fingered with your first, second, and third finger, an E minor with your first and second finger, then a C with your first, second, and third finger, and then a D7, like that. And that's our chord progression we're gonna go through. Now before we start strumming it, let's analyze it and look for that common finger. From G, there's one finger doesn't need to move when you go to E minor. It's the first finger. So I take off my second and third, and I actually will nudge the first finger back a hair to make room for my second, but it never leaves the fifth string. It still stays on the fifth string. You got your E minor. Then from E minor to C, the middle finger is the pivot or the connection finger. So when I go E minor, take off the index finger, hop over to the C chord, and I just put the index in the third finger down for that. And then from the C to the D7, the index finger is the connection note again. I'll leave it on the second string first fret, build the D7 with the second and third fingers around it. And then at the end, D7, taking you back to the top with G, I'm just gonna take off my first and second, slide the third finger up a fret. So on that D7 to G, we actually have to move the third finger up a fret, but it never comes off the first string. So from D7, you just slide it up and then rebuild your G chord. Now, if we add a strum to that, it's transitions are a lot easier uh, if we know to leave that finger down. So let's try something like this. We're gonna go. Notice how I don't take off my finger. Do that a few times to get the hang of it. So next time you're working on a song or a chord progression, just make some observations and look if there's any finger that you can use as a pivot or stationary, use it when you're switching chords. Now let's check out the lesson of the week. This week's lesson is on pull-offs and hammer-ons. I'm gonna start you on the second string and everything we do will be on the second string here for this first part. Let's start with the pinky on the 12th fret and the index finger on the 8th fret of the 2nd string. And then a pull-off is where you're going to strike a higher note with the pick. And then the 2nd note is lower on the same string, but it's not plucked with the pick. The pull-off finger, in this case the pinky, it makes a tugging motion downwards towards the floor. And gets the eighth fret ringing. So you're gonna pick and then make the tugging motion downwards to get the eighth fret to ring. And try to keep the notes the same volume. So try not to pick hard and then get a weak pull off. See, like that's kind of weak. So we wanna pick and then make a good solid pull off. Pick, pull off. And then from that point, we're gonna pull that first finger off to the open second string. So all together, we're gonna do this three note pattern four times. Pick, pull off, pull off. Pick, pull off, pull off. Nice. So let's make a little routine, a little exercise with that. From that one, we're gonna go down to the 10th and 7th fret, same string, and do the same technique. We're gonna pick the 10th fret, pull off to the 7th, pull off to the open. Four of that. Okay, then move back to the 8th and 5th fret, do the same thing. And then finally, the same thing on 7th and 4th fret. 
and then we end it on the fifth fret, second string. So let's put that all together. It goes like this. And the idea is to keep it very even. You don't want to have a jumpy or a kind of a quick pull off. Or you want to keep it real steady. Good thing to do is practice it with a metronome. So we'll just do each one four times. And then when you get comfortable with it, try it a little bit quicker. Now let's check out hammer-ons. We're actually going to use the same frets, but we're going to do a hammer-on version of what we just did. So for the hammer-ons, we're going to start by picking the open second string, and then you're going to hammer on your index finger to the 8th fret 2nd string and then hammer the pinky on to the 12th fret 2nd string. Now hammer on is the opposite of a pull off. Instead of picking a note and going to a lower note as you do in pull offs, we're going to pick a note and go to a higher note on the same string. That's the hammer on. So let's try that. We're going to pick the open 2nd string and then Smack your index finger down hard enough on the 8th fret so that the note rings. That's why they call it a hammer-on. Imagine you're hammering in a note, or tapping in a note, pounding in a note with your first finger. And try to come down perpendicular to the fretboard, straight down so you get a solid note. And then with your pinky, this might be the harder finger, do the same thing. Try to come down straight down directly onto the 2nd string 12th fret. Okay, and then do that four times in a row. One, two, three, four. And again, we're striving for an even space between each note. Try not to go for a jagged. But rather even. And just do it slow enough to play it real good. Now we're going to move back and do the same frets as we did with the hammer on, I mean the pull off version but with the hammer-ons. So we got four times on 0, 8, 12. Then we're going to move back and go 0, 7, 10. Four times, then 0, 5, 8. And then 0, 4, 7. And then on the 5. Okay, so all together that goes like this. comfortable after you've practiced it with your metronome slowly try to play it a little bit quicker just to give an illustration a little bit faster might be all right so take this lesson you learned this week work with your hammer-ons and pull-offs try to incorporate hammer-ons and pull-offs into some of your lead guitar work and even some of your rhythm riffing work too. Pull-offs and hammer-ons work great in pretty much any style of guitar playing, whether you're playing rhythm guitar or lead guitar, both country, blues, heavy metal, rock, they all use hammer-ons and pull-offs. So work on them, develop that, and you got another great tool for your tool belt. That's it for this week's channel episode. I hope you learned something new and inspiring that can be used in your own playing. And be sure to check out guitartricks.com slash channel for more info and free lessons that'll help you towards your goal of becoming a solid and competent guitar player. And while you're here, hit that button below to subscribe so you won't miss another lesson. I'm Dave with Guitar Tricks. See you next time. Until then, keep those fingers flying.